This video will follow the CAN high-low voltages throughout the harnesses from front to back. When checking for missing communication, it is important to understand that without ECU1 CM41, or better known as the master ECU, the rest of the ECUs will not show all green indicator lights as they cannot function without the master. The graph at the bottom of this page is a general explanation of what you may find for voltages when checking the system. CAN bus voltage levels. The CAN bus data low and high signals idle at 2.5 with respect to ground when there is no active data. When data is active, CAN high switches between 2.5 and 3.5, and CAN low switches between 2.5 and 1.5. When these voltages are measured with a multimeter, only the average voltage is displayed. Typical voltage for CAN high are 2.6 to 3, and CAN low are typically 2.4 to 2. CAN high should be greater than 2.5 and can low less than 2.5. We're going to go through the can high and low detection for troubleshooting. The first step to de deciding whether it's a can problem is to see what your lights are doing on your ECUs. If you have no lights on any of your ECUs, you're not looking at a can high low problem, you're looking for a power issue, so revert to the power troubleshooting video. To start on the CAN high low troubleshooting, recommended to start at the monitor. So at the monitor you've got one single plug in the back. So you can, if we remove that, you'll notice that there's two sets of green and yellow wires. We're looking for the ones going into pins 8 and 9. The second set of green wires is going to travel through the monitor harness and come back to this CAN 2 terminator located right back here. So they're not going anywhere. So that you can probe for power your fluctuating power on pins 8 and 9 while plugged into the back of the monitor in this single plug harness. So starting from the plug at the back of the monitor, we're going to follow that through the rest of the monitor harness here. You will find a cluster of plugs about halfway through the harness. One of them's for GPS, one of them's to bring power into the unit. There's also five plugs here that we are not using in our CAN diagnostics, nor do we use them for anything else. So they can just be tied off. We're going to follow through the monitor harness from there on our CAN diagnostics till we get to where it joins to the tractor harness here. We're going to have an ISO loop A CAN connection and an ISO loop B CAN connection. The ISO loop A connection is how we tee in the in cab switch box. So if you want to eliminate the cans, the switch box in the cab as being part of the problem, you can actually just take this isobus extension for the cabs, cabin switch box, and just simply unplug those two plugs and eliminate that extension altogether. This just makes the ISO loop A go directly to the tractor harness. That eliminates your cabin switch box. Your ISO loop B is how you get connection from the monitor all the way through the system, and it will connect to ISO loop B labeled on this harness. The other thing is, is your A and B are both opposite plugs, so they can't be confused. So we're going to follow through pins two and four for our green and yellow into the tractor harness, and that's going to take us all the way back through the harness until we get to the back of the implement. The back of the tractor where it joins the implement harness. And then we've got these two pins here, eight and nine, going out through the other harness. ISO loop A is terminated from this point at this terminator. So if we have no cabin switch box, the only purpose of ISO loop A is to go to this 
powered ter Powell Terminator in the tractor cap. At the connection between the tractor and our implement, for pins 8 and 9, they will go into pins 8 and 9 on the implement harness. That follows through until we get to our ECU breakout. So this is just coiled up. You'll find your ECU breakout in the middle of that implement. From the middle of that implement, you've got your ECU breakout. You're also going to have a plug for auxiliary power, whisker switch, and safety switch. This is your whisker switch here. Going into the ECU breakout, the signal is going in on pins 3 and 4, the green and yellow wires. There's two sets. I'll explain the other one in a second. Pins 3 and 4 go through into pins 3 and 4 on the ECU breakout. If this is a drill and you do not have ECUs on it, you'll have a plug like this. It actually looks like this, but I opened it up to show you what's inside. So pin plus signals going in on 3 and 4, and it's coming out on 17 and 19. If you have ECUs, the signal is going in, and you'll notice that I have it opened up here. It goes in on these green and yellow wires here, these two, and you'll notice that it splits off four different ways. It splits off the three comms plugs, so you've got one here, one here, and one here. Those are pins seven and eight on all three. So the same comms plug doesn't matter which ECU. The other split it goes to is the the lead off if you had a switch box. So if this is a tank and we had a tank switch box, we're going on pins two and four coming out on pins seven and eight. This loop cap on here allows that signal to continue through to go to our main ECUs. So you file, follow pins seven and eight back down to our ECU breakout, pins 17 and 19, go through into pins 17 and 19 on the implement harness and they're going to follow through all the way back. So that means that we haven't learned any of these ECUs in yet if this was a drill because we need the master first which is always on the tank. So to get to that ECU, the master, we're going to follow all the way through, back through to the back of the drill where it will join to the next implement harness on the tank. So we're on pins 3 and 4 again. So those pins back there, 17 and 19 at that ECU breakout, are going to become pins 3 and 4 again at the back. They're going to go in, become pins 3 and 4 on our implement harness. They're going to follow all the way back through till we come to the ECUs on that tank. So same thing, ECU breakout again. Going in on pins three and four, and then it goes in again, same thing, splits off. You've got your can high and low breaking off four different ways. You've got your comms plugs, pins seven and eight again on all three, and your switch box lead out where we can have a switch box in here. If not, you need that loop cap or it kills the signal. Going in on two and four, out on seven and eight again, and at the rear implement harness, 7 and 8 are simply terminating the signal. So this is our rear terminator, comes from the switch box lead out, goes back through those two wires on 7 and 8, back to our ECU breakout, to our rear Powell terminator. On our connectors, pin 7 and 8, our master is always going to be closest to the tank, so it will be on the bottom of the stack. So you've got pins 7 and 8 signal going in. Pins 9 and 10 are going to be your signal coming out that allow the rest of the ECUs to get on the CAN bus. So it's going to go back, it's going to splice the 7, 9 and 10 and splice into the other green and yellow, and they're going to go to the other CAN plugs. So they all have 7 and 8 so they can be used in any place, but 9 and 10 is how the rest of them join the bus. So from here, the 9 and 10 also goes back to our ECU breakout on pins 5 and 6. 
Pins five and six are gonna go all the way back because we have to get the other ECUs on our drill to join in. And they're gonna go back to our union at the tank drill. Five and six, five and six still. That five and six is gonna go all the way back through up to our ECU breakout. It's gonna go in on five and six, come out on five and six here, and become nine and 10 at the split off here, going to our three communication plugs to join those in. And that's how we get everything to communicate with the high and low. We'll do another presentation on where to start and how to track each one for different scenarios next.